In this video, I'm going to show you how to compute a number of important variables that are related to stock prices. So the security that I chose is Apple. Um, you can easily download the historical data, historical stock prices from Yahoo Finance or any other uh, source that you can find online. Now, what you see on the screen is uh, all the information that I get from Yahoo Finance uh, when I type in AAPL, which is the ticker symbol for Apple. Now, let me explain what is exactly all the information that I have. So, on the first column, I have date. I downloaded the stock price of Apple for the past year. So, the frequency of my data is weekly, which means every, every row in this file represents a week. My first column is date. My second column is the open price. So this is the first price that the stock is traded uh, in a week. High is the highest price of the stock over the course of the week. Low is the lowest price during the week. And close represents the close price of the stock at the end of the week. Adjusted close is similar to close, but it accounts for the stock splits, dividends, and a bunch of other things. So when you compute returns, you always want to use this adjusted close because, because it incorporates uh, dividends and uh, splits and everything else. Finally, volume represents the number of shares traded uh, throughout a, a week. At this point, we are not using this column at all. Now, in order to compute uh, weekly returns, all I have to do is to type in equals the adjusted close of this week minus the adjusted close of last week. Uh, the whole thing divided by the adjusted close of last week. So this is the return. So this means uh, on this particular week, the return of Apple uh, was three point, almost 3.1%. Now, if you come over here and just drag this, all the way down it just uses the formula that we provided and computes the weekly returns for all the weeks uh, that uh, we have in this data uh, after this uh, week that we initially ca calculated the return for so now i have all the weekly returns for this one year data that i downloaded Now, if you want average return, all you have to do is to type in equals average. And now it, the, the parameter that is required for this average function is basically all the returns that we computed for these individual weeks. So for every single week, we have a return number. And if I select all of this, so I, I have to click on this number and then drag it down. and stop here. And if you just hit enter, what you have is the average return over the course of the year that I have data for, and it is basically the average of all of these numbers. So this is the average weekly return of Apple's stock. Now another important variable is the standard deviation of return. So for the standard deviation, again, you just uh, type in equals, STD. So here I have two options, the standard deviation of S, which is the standard deviation of sample, and STD, uh, standard deviation of P, which is the standard deviation of population. So usually when we have limited data, we, we uh, choose uh, standard deviation of sample, so stdev.s. Now again, I have to specify the returns that I'm trying to find the standard deviation of. So uh, again, my returns are going to be the returns that I computed in this column. So I'm just going to choose all of them. All right, so I'm going to stop here. Again, hit enter. So once you do that, it basically tells you that the standard deviation of weekly returns is around 4.8%. Now, in addition to average return and the standard deviation of return, another useful variable is the correlation between uh, your stock and other stocks. So let's say in our portfolio, we have Apple and we have AMD. 
uh, one important question for investors is what is the correlation between the two? So if you're holding two stocks in your portfolio, what is the correlation between these two stocks? The other stock that I selected for this experiment is AMD. So in the next tab, I have all the same information for AMD. So first I'm gonna go ahead and compute uh, the weekly return for this new stock. So it's going to be equal to the adjusted close. All right, so let me go back. I have to type in parentheses. Adjusted close minus adjusted close of the week prior divided by last week's adjusted close. So hit enter. Now this is the return this is the weekly return of AMD for this particular week. Again, I'm going to click on this number and basically drag this down while I'm holding down the left mouse key. All right, so stop here. Now I have all the weekly returns for AMD. Now, let me go back to uh, this page, this tab here. So if you're looking for correlation, then all you have to do is to type in equals corel. So this is the correlation function. So the input is going to be the returns of Apple and AMD. Now, the important point here is that you need to provide the same number of observations for correlation. So Given that I downloaded the uh, one year data for both companies, I'm gonna have the same number of observations. So my first parameter is going to be the returns of Apple. So I'm going to select all these returns that I have here. So this is my first parameter. Let me just go back up. Now I'm going to type in comma. So now I have to enter the returns of AMD, which are computed on the next tab. So from this tab, I just select all these return numbers that I computed. Now if I hit enter, it is not giving me uh, a number which I expected when I computed correlation. So there must be something wrong. So if you just look at the formula that we typed in, so it is trying to compute the correlation uh, when the first parameter is H3 to H54, so that's uh, column H, which is the, the return column. And it, it is trying to, so the, the, the returns that I have for Apple are put in, are placed in H3, and it goes down all the way to H54. And the numbers that I have for AMD, it goes from H3 to H55. You can immediately see that the number of observations in two columns that I provided are not the same. So now if you go back to see what's going on, so my data on Apple ends on August 3rd, and my circle data on AMD ends on August 4th. So Basically, I have one more observation here that I don't have uh, for Apple. So I'm going to just delete this one so that both uh, my data, my historical data for both companies end on August 3rd. So if I just look at the number of observations, uh, the number of returns that I have for Apple. Is 52. And then the number of observations that I have for AMD is now 52. So I basically got rid of this uh, additional observation which I didn't have for Apple. Okay, so let me go back to my formula for correlation. So here I have H3 to H54 and I'm gonna change this AMD part from H3 to H54 so that I have the same number of observations for both companies. Now if I do that, then it just gives me the correlation number, which is uh, 55%. So this number basically tells me that the correlation between 
the weekly returns of Apple and AMD over the past year uh, was 55%.